glory be to God in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray. Amen and amen. E N A A Amen. Good to see you, Sister Larry. It's wonderful to have you connected. Reverend Adewumi, it's wonderful to have you connected. Glory be to God. Pastor Margaret Fabi, great to have you connected with us. Miracle, you bless me beyond repairs. God bless you too. Great to have you connected. Pastor Tunde, Reverend Shegun Alalade, it's wonderful to know that you're there. Pastor Rashidat Collins, it's wonderful to know you're there. Brother Sam, it's son, I'm sorry, it's great to know you're there. Anega, great to know you're there. Of course, my precious, wonderful wife is here. Patience, Timothy, we deeply appreciate you. Love you dearly. Miss you all so much. Pastor Tony Idemudia, we are my favorite person at the moment. Great to have you connected with us. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Ah, Pastor Ayodeji, Deacon Ayodeji Aluko, we celebrate you. Mrs. Ugo Peace, love you dearly. Wonderful to have you connected. I haven't been mentioning where everybody is connected to, but anyway. Ebooks, ebooks, ebooks. Thank you for sending the children's segment and thank you for being connected. And you are there from Abuja. My God, Pastor Tonia Idemudia. Kai, you killed it. You hit it out of the park on Wednesday. My goodness, God sent you to me. As a matter of fact, the testimony I was sharing to say God has, you know, encouraged me and brought encouragement in the midst of darkness. It's principally you that the Lord used as an instrument. And I am so grateful to God for you. Thank you for all that you are and all that you do. Pastor Anne Akialonge, great to know that you're there. Pastor Francis is there. New Nyanya Center. Sister Rita is there. Hallelujah. Ah, my one and only Lord Mo is here with us in the studio. And Magdalene Nelly, I'll say it again. We miss you here. Wish you were here. And everybody else that hasn't commented or maybe has commented. Oh, my goodness. Yusuf Pam, great to know that you are here with us. Hallelujah. Wow, 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 wow. And uh, I beg your pardon? Yeah, I have saw Matthew as well. Great to have you, Matthew. And um, your wife as well, your precious babe. Uh, this is good. Patricia Okeji. I know that's the entire Okeji family that are huddled together to be connected. I'm so excited to see you. Glory be to God. Great to have you connected. Great to have you. Savior. Wow, 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 wow. Long time no see, no hear. It's great to see you connected. Glory be to God. Please let me keep seeing the names. Uh, Katangole Henry. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful to have you connected, my goodness. He's connecting from Spain. Oh, my goodness. Wow, 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 wow. Glory be to God. Please, Andrew, I need you to be doing this so I can move to other things, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Kadukwe Aluko is there. I'm still the one who did it, not you, Andrew. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Okay, because of the screen or what? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. I must say at this point, if you have a prayer request, if there's something you would like for us to pray about, please do share. Um, as I'm preaching and as I'm ministering, I might interrupt to pray or I might wait till the end, mm -hmm. but please don't be shy to drop your <coughs> prayer request. We will definitely pray for you. Well, I, I am ready to go into the word. Is everybody ready to go into the word? I am absolutely ready to go into the word. Hallelujah. So, let us pray. Precious Father, the entrance of your word gives light. Breathe upon your word, I pray. Let there be light. There is a spirit in man and it is your inspiration that gives us understanding. So, breathe upon your word and give us understanding. Open our eyes that we might behold wonderful things from your word. Amen. I receive your encouragement, precious Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Great to see you, Kadupe. 
It's wonderful to know you're connected. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Well, let's go straight into the word of God. Let my mouth be the pen of a ready writer. And in the morning, this is Mark chapter 11 and verse 20, and we'll read all the way to verse 22. I will shortly give you a background into what is happening. And this is the key scripture that we have been using in this entire series. This has been the main scripture that we have been using all along about faith. Remember that this is still the faith series that we are going into. We want to perfect how to walk by faith. We don't want it to be by chance. We don't want it to be trial and error. Hallelujah. And this is our foundation scripture. Glory be to God. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remembrance saith unto him, saith unto Jesus, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have the faith of God. Now I would point that out again that many, you know, translators says have faith in God because it's it's sometimes people try to help God out. I believe the Bible means what it says and it says what it means. You know, what is actually there in the original is have the God kind of faith or have the faith of God. No wonder the Bible says we know we have the same spirit of faith we believe therefore have we spoken it means there are all kinds of faiths out there but god's kind of faith the faith that brings results the faith that achieves for us the faith that we can live by it works on this wise hallelujah and one of the things i want you to see from this scripture is those words that are highlighted in yellow up there it says it dried up from the roots because this is so critical to us understanding faith the reason why many people have shipwrecked in their faith in their walk of faith the reason why many people have started to walk by faith they get excited when they hear the news that we can download the spiritual blessings here on earth when they hear the news that we can live in victory when they hear the news that Healing is the children's bread and we can live free of sickness and disease. When they hear the news that we can live in prosperity and abundance and that God will meet our needs. For the Bible says in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, therefore I shall not want. When people hear all of that, they get excited. But be without understanding the way that faith works and without understanding this little bit of it that we're about to share today, they get discouraged when it looks as if things aren't working the way it is supposed to and the key for our understanding today is that the bible says the fig tree dried up from the roots now let me give you a little background to this so that you might have a clearer understanding glory be to god the bible says they were going you know jesus with his disciples and you know the hangers ons were there were there as well the hangers on were there as well and jesus being hungry how many of you know that jesus can be hungry <laughs> at least the bible said that he also said jesus wept okay now jesus was hungry jesus was born in that area that whole you know area of judea and israel hallelujah so he knows he was a carpenter, he was a strong person, and he was renowned for his wisdom. And the Bible says he saw a fig tree afar off. Now some people have, have questioned and have been upset and say, why would Jesus, because he didn't find fig, figs on the fig tree, why would he curse the poor fig? For the Bible says, for the time of fig had not come, you know? Why would he do such a thing? Well, you need to understand the background of it. I'm an African. I know mangoes very well. I love mangoes. I'm passionate about mangoes. So, because I love mangoes that well, and because I grew up with mango trees all around me, 
I can tell you when a mango tree has fruit on it. All I need to do is look from afar. If there's any orange or any yellow on that tree, it tells me there are ripe mangoes. I don't have to get there and pluck it before I know. I can know it afar off. It's the same thing with figs. Jesus grew up with figs. So he understands that fruit and leaves come together with figs. Figs tend to shed their leaves. And the leaves come back up as they begin to bud and, and, and flourish again, it coincides with when the fruit also comes. The leaf protects the fruit. So, in other words, when you saw figs with leaves, you knew that that fig had fruit on it. Are you with me? And understand that I agree that it was not the season for figs. So, it means all other fig trees they had been coming across were dry and leafless. And of course, Jesus didn't venture to any of them. They are seeing fig tree and fig tree and fig tree, and they know that this is, the, is not the season for figs. So they don't bother, and they can see that those fig trees are like every other fig tree, leafless at the moment. But the Bible says, and he saw a fig tree having leaves from afar off having leaves in other words that fig tree was declaring i have fruit and then jesus gets there and he finds no fruit he must have gone out of his way he must have deviated he must have walked some extra distance to get to that tree only to find that he didn't live up to the promise he didn't live up to the promise as the time when it ought to have fruits it had nothing on it so the bible says that jesus declared that no more no more empty barrels no more unfruitfulness no more barrenness no more this is wrong it was never designed to function this way this is an abuse you are heralding what is not so for this reason no man will eat fruit of you anymore i hope that Put some clarity into the question in somebody's mind. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Jesus did what we've been trying to teach about faith. That the spirit of faith is I believe. And therefore I speak. So Jesus sees an error that needs to be corrected. There shouldn't be a fig tree with leaves on it that doesn't have fruit. So he says to the tree. Now, if we were there with him at that time, we'd say maybe this man is psycho. We would have said maybe this man is, is crazy. Or as they would say in Nigeria, maybe this man is crazy. Because how does a grown man start speaking to trees? Hello? I mean, imagine somebody going and he, he decides to start speaking to his car. Oh, you car. Behave well. Your brakes will prosper. Your, your, your window will not fall down. <laughs> we will turn and look at the person and think something isn't right somewhere. That's exactly what Jesus did. But that's the spirit of faith. That's the spirit of faith. Is there somebody hearing what I'm saying? So he, he does exactly that. He speaks what he believes. He believes that this needs to be corrected. He has lined it up with the witness of the Father in his spirit. And he speaks what he believes. No man will ever eat fruit of you henceforth and forever. And he walks away. Now, this is where it gets interesting. And he walks away from the fig tree. And he continues to go. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, they went on to Bethany, spent the night there, and so on. On their way back the following day, so 24 hours had elapsed. Now, let me ask you a question. When Jesus spoke to the tree, he was committing himself. He was making himself 
He was publicly identifying or publicly committing to a course of action. Is there somebody hearing what I'm saying? And when we walk by faith, it's the same thing. I am healed in the name of Jesus. Heaven hears it. Hell and every demonic spirit hears it. And sometimes the people around us also hear it. And they are watching to see whether anything will happen. Now the truth is, Peter was there. John was there. Bartholomew was there. Judas was there. All the 12 disciples were there with Jesus. And when Jesus spoke, they looked at the tree he spoke to and nothing happened. No change. Have you ever been in that position? Have you ever been in that situation where you commit to faith and it looks as if nothing happened? Is it that you got a word from God? You are studying or you are praying and God drops a word in your spirit. Or maybe you are sitting in church and God drops a word in your spirit. Maybe you are hearing a pastor. Maybe somebody who flows in the prophetic and God drops a word. It's not that every single thing they say is from God. But that which bears witness with your spirit. For the Bible says we have a spirit in us and we need that no man has to teach us. It means when they speak it hits your ears the physical ears but god's voice hits your heart you know from within that this is god that's speaking to you and when you hear that and you commit to it and you look around you and it looks as if nothing has happened what do you do this is that point where people miss it this is that point where people put aside their faith. This is that time where people get shipwrecked because they don't understand something about faith. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? So they went away. I have a feeling. I, I know Peter. Ah, bros. Bros Pete. He must have looked a bit longer than everybody else because, you know, he, he, he wants to be sure. And as far as Thomas... Thomas must have stayed there while they continued walking. He was like, hey, Jesus, slow down. Uh -uh. Let's wait and see whether this, this thing you did is going to work. He wants to see with his eyes. Unless I touch, I will not believe. That's Thomas. So he must have stayed with the fig tree. He knows they are going to Bethany. He knows the way to Martha's and Mary's house, Lazarus' house. He, know where he, knows, he knows where they're going to spend the night. So he wants to see whether this thing really works. <laughs> you know, I gave my offering last 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 Sunday. And then I'm watching to see my finances. I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see something. Hallelujah. I said by his stripes, I'm healed. I've been checking the wound since that time. Till now. I'm waiting. That's Thomas. So Thomas probably hung around for an hour. Maybe two hours. Nothing. The tree is still there. The leaves are still there. The vexation is still staring everybody in the face. It looks as if nothing is happening. It looks as if all was amiss. Nothing going on. Eventually, I'm sure Thomas must have joined them in Bethany. <laughs> I don't know. The Bible doesn't record it. If he said anything to his master, I said, hey, Jesus, you, that's your display on the road a grown man like you speaking to trees well i stayed though the tree is still there and it's still probably going to fruit when it decides to fruit it's still there you hear me sir it's still there i don't know maybe he didn't maybe he did maybe he thought it in his mind i don't know maybe peter thought it in his mind i don't know I don't know. You, you think of the various kinds of reactions the disciples could have. Remember, Jesus would constantly say to them, Oh, ye of little faith, how long must I suffer you? Hey! But glory be to God. The next day, I want somebody to say, The coming day. The coming day. For there is a coming day. In the mighty name of Jesus, there is a coming day. The Bible says the next day, as they were passing by, 
You know, when you release your faith, don't worship it. Can I say that again? Don't begin to serve it. Don't begin to. The Bible says the kingdom of God is like a man that sows a seed into the soil. And he does not wake up every day to dig up that soil to examine, to know whether it is fruiting. But you know what he does? He goes to sleep. Hey! Knowing that the earth will bring forth first the blade, then the stalk, and then the full ear. Hallelujah. So will it be for you at all times in the mighty name of Jesus. And in the morning as they passed by, they, not just Jesus, they, they saw, they saw, they saw, they saw. I will say to you in the name of Jesus that those who doubted your faith, they will see. That those who mocked at you, they will see. That those who thought it could not happen, they will see. That those who are still trying to decide whether this is real or this is untrue, they will see. Come on, if you believe it, say it with me. They will see. They will see. Oh, hallelujah. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw. Hey! All the days in my life, everyone who thought I could not do it, everyone who thought it's, I'm, I'm done with, everyone who thought that's the end of it for him, they will see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, everybody, for your wonderful response. They will see you. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Miracle. Yes, they will see. In the mighty name of Jesus, they will see. Hallelujah. But now I want us to see and I want us to learn. It says, and they saw. Now, you know, there are some details that if you don't look well and meditate, you'll never pick. It says, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. From the roots roots now that word isn't there by mistake it tells us something about the way faith works faith only works from the root from the root i was explaining this as i was explaining to somebody the difference between you know medical science and the work of faith and there's absolutely not any, nothing, there's zero wrong with, you know, seeing the hand of God walking through medical treatment. Hallelujah. And I would repeat it. I said, Jesus made it clear to us that, you know, medical science is a good thing. The Bible says a kingdom that is divided against itself shall what? Shall fall. So if the Bible tells us that Satan is the author of sickness. Jesus went about healing all that were oppressed of the evil one. Then Satan cannot be the one that is giving us the gift of healing through medicine. Satan is trying to make us afflicted. Then he's also raising doctors and bringing knowledge to make us healed. That's a kingdom divided against itself. Hallelujah. If medicines bring healing, it means medicines comes from he whose desire and intention it is for you to be healed. And that is God. And the beautiful thing about, his, about God is that he, he gives us numerous ways, numerous ways for us to choose healing, for us to approach him for healing. Hallelujah. The only difference is that medical science almost always addresses the fruit, but faith addresses the root. Can I say that again? Medical science medicates the symptoms. For the most part, medical science still depends on your body to do what God has ordained it to do, which is to heal itself. So it creates the circumstance for the healing in your body to come to pass. When you take Panadol, when you take Ibuprofen, when you take uh, neuro, neuro, I mean, what do they call it? Neurofen. I have a doctor in the house, so shoot me if I'm wrong. 
when you take any of those things, they actually don't heal you. What they do is that they address the mechanism that produces pain. So they go to work chemically on your nervous system so that those electrical signals from the source of where the sickness or the, 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 the problem is to your brain where you feel the pain, it, it obstructs that signal. So what those things do is by obstructing the signal, they help your body to find a relative peace and equilibrium in which it will begin to address the problem itself. Either by sending white blood cells in that direction, either by producing chemicals that would deal with that, either by surrounding and encasing it and then looking for a way to eject it or whatever it is, the body goes to work. Sometimes medical science also gives us chemicals that kill whatever agent it is that is bringing that thing there. Hallelujah. But for the most part, medical science tends to address symptoms and not the cause. Metformin for diabetes only stimulates insulin. It does not cure you of the reason why there is an insulin dysfunction. It doesn't deal with that. It doesn't help your pancreas produce insulin. It doesn't, you know, help your body regulate and know when to shoot out insulin. Is there somebody here what I'm saying? Amen. I'm loading pin for high blood pressure. There are meal for high blood pressure. All deal with symptoms and seek some mechanical or physiological way in which they can bring forth a chemical or physiological change in your body but they don't necessarily address the root sometimes they do i give that to medical science as we get more and more and more advanced the root can be that you need to lose weight the root can be that you need more rest the root can be your eating habits and your diet the root can be demonic activity and believe me demons are real hello the root can be all sorts of stuff. The root can be hereditary. And often that's where demonic activity is involved. The root, root can be all sorts of stuff. Medical science can give you peace, can give you an atmosphere where you can actually now build your faith that addresses the root. So sometimes medical science deals with the root. You know, even surgery. You have cancer, cut it off. You have cancer, chemotherapy it with poisonous chemicals that will kill the cancer and kill you at the same time better of two evils am i right or am i wrong my wife is shaking here they, it does that cancer cells are actually your cells did you know that it's your cells that are not obedient they are not growing according to instructions encoded in the dna so it's disobedient you hello it's not an external invasion is your body differentiating by its own laws? And so they throw the chemicals. So the chemicals, chemotherapy doesn't just deal with the cancer. It deals with your good cells as well. That's where hair begins to fall off. Eyebrows begin to go. Throat becomes dry because it's dealing with you. But, you know, you are much more than the cancer. So by the time it has killed the cancer, you are still alive. But if you keep taking it, you will die as well. That's chemotherapy. And that's why you have you are limited to certain bouts and doses of it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But God's way is different. God doesn't deal with the symptoms. The cancer is not the growth. Cancer is what caused the growth. What made it happen? Maybe one day medical science will be advanced enough to be able to deal with everything from the roots. But right now, much of what we do in medicine is dealing with the symptoms. Is there somebody here what I'm saying? But faith always, always, never, ever, ever does it any other way. Always deals with the root. And that's where we miss it because we are looking for something to deal with the symptoms while faith is dealing with the roots. 
I need money. So I put my faith out. I give an offering. I need it now. But the money doesn't come now because you expect that God will deal with the symptoms. But you see, God realizes that there was somebody he has aligned to have done this and to have brought that. So he begins to go to work with that person where that person is and drops a dream in his heart like he did with, 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 with Pharaoh in the time of Joseph. Pharaoh dreamt a dream. Same thing with Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar dreamt a dream. In other words, God went to begin to work in them. While Joseph was still in prison. While Daniel was still at home. Is there somebody hearing what I'm saying? But God is doing something. The moment you release your words, the moment you speak by faith, God has started work. But his work always begins at the root and because the root is covered in soil because the root you know the plant won't grow if you can see the root you have to uproot the soil to see the root and when you do that you damage it and reverse the process of faith so in other words god is working even though you can't see it it means faith is working even though you can't feel it it means something is happening even though you cannot discern it something is going on is this making sense to somebody the bible says and they saw the fig tree there was something about what they saw that made them realize this is different from normal because if fig trees would die normally they will begin to die from the leaves have you ever seen that happen whether where leaves begin to to shiver and 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 yes, begin to dry up and begin to fall and you see stems and branches begin to dry up but you can still see the the main stem still holding and you can still know that there's still life in there because in the world it dries up from the leaves but with god it dries up from the roots if god will save your marriage he will save it from the roots. If God will bless you financially, he will bless you from the roots. If God is going to bring increase into your business, he's going to bring it from the roots. So he will address the things that are out of order. He will address the things that are out of configuration. He deals with it from the roots. He deals with it from the roots. If you believe what I'm saying, look at somebody and tell them from the roots, from the roots, from the roots, from the roots. It's always from the roots. I know you can't see it right now, but God is walking from the roots. I know you can't smell it, but God is walking from the roots. I know you've not heard any news yet, but God is walking from the roots. And if you will just let go of control and allow God, you will see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's only a matter of time, but God is working from the roots. Something about what they saw. They said, Kai, look at this. It's drying up from under. I can still see some fresh leaves on top. Hey, there are some things in your life that God has cursed that will die. You are still looking at the leaves, thinking everything is okay. You better move your heart away from that thing. Because once God has spoken, so shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. From the roots from the roots so using the allegory of medical science there's nothing wrong with taking things that will alleviate the symptoms and give you the opportunity to go into god's word to build your faith to release that faith by speaking to that sickness while you are taking your malaria medication while you are taking your flu medication while you are taking your vaccine while you are doing all whatever it is that you have been asked to do to make it better but don't forget to speak to it by faith so that it deals with the situation from the roots from the roots from the roots from the roots is this blessing anybody yes, sir. and peter calling to remembrance said unto jesus master wow my goodness look at the fig tree which you cursed is withered away jesus smiles because he knew when they were doubting, Jesus smiled. Because he knew when they were wondering, Jesus smiled. 
Because he knew they were all staring at him when he started speaking to the fig tree. And they would not speak. They kept doing it the way of the world. And many of us are like that. Jesus had to turn to his disciples when they said, don't you care if we perish? When they were in the midst of the storm. He was like, why can't you yourself speak to the wind? Instead of being bamboozled and amazed that I spoke to the wind. I need you to walk by faith, all oh, faithless generation. So Jesus, when they say, look at the fig tree, wow, whoa, Jesus answered and said, have the faith of God. Are you getting this? If thou shalt say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and thou shalt believe in your heart, that those things which thou sayest shall come to pass, that's verse 23, thou shall have whatsoever you say. So have the faith of God. Have the faith that deals with the matter from the root. And you can have it. I can have it. Hallelujah. Is this blessing anybody right now? I certainly hope it is. <laughs> Because the continuation says, for verily I say unto you, have the God kind of faith for verily means truly. It means this is important. I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Whosoever shall say to his leg, be thou healed and be thou recovered. Whosoever shall say to his lungs, be thou healed and asthma be gone. Whosoever shall say to his blood pressure, be thou calmed down and be thou recovered whosoever shall say to his pocket money cometh whosoever whosoever add your name there whosoever are you not whosoever whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass shall not could shall have whatsoever he said therefore i say unto you that whatsoever things you desire when you pray now listen to this carefully when you pray believe that you receive them now believe that you receive them please notice it didn't say believe that you will receive them it says believe that you receive them. In other words, believe that you have been given. Believe that it is yours. And you shall have them. So it's not that Jesus didn't understand the difference between past tense and present tense. He says the onus on you is to believe that it's mine now. The onus on me, God, is to bring them to pass. So there's a difference between the time you commit to faith and the time that the results become visible. Is there somebody here? And you shall have. That's future tense. Believe that you receive them. Present tense. And you shall have them. It is that gap. It is that onerous gap. It is that time. A time that was referred to when Jesus was in the boat and the storm came, it was referred to as the meantime. In the meantime, a storm arose. In the meantime, a time that is very mean. That meantime is where we get into trouble. That meantime. The time between when we release our faith and when we see the result. That meantime. The time between when you say sorry and the person forgives you. That meantime. That's the problem. That's where marriages break. <coughs> Hallelujah. That meantime. Forgiveness will come, oh, but it's taking time. That meantime. So because it's not instantaneous, you just keep the woman. I said sorry. And then you just cut everything. Everybody goes his own way. Because of the meantime. Because of the meantime. We commit ourselves. We start on the right course. We head in the right direction because of the meantime. Is this making sense to you? Hallelujah. Amen. And that's the reason why Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12 says that you be not slothful but followers. Followers of the giants of faith. Followers. 
of those who have gone before us and are examples unto us, followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So you have need of patience. Patience is the twin brother of faith. Patience is what happens in the meantime. Patience is that which enables you to stay tenacious through the time you commit unto the time that you receive. Patience. Be not slothful. Don't be despondent. Don't be heartbroken. Don't be disillusioned. But be a follower of the examples we see in scripture. There is nothing. Jesus is number one example. He speaks to this fig tree. He believes that what he has said has come to pass. So he doesn't even need to look at what he sees. He's confident enough to walk away and continue to where he's going. Is there somebody here what I'm saying? Patience. When they get there, when it has finally become visible, you know God doesn't need a hundred people to be in faith. He just needs one. He needs the one that is the stakeholder. The one. Hallelujah. Be not slothful, but be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Faith and patience. Faith and patience. Do you know the Bible says that at the mouth of two and or three witnesses, let every word be established. So why don't we go into the word and see if there's really a marriage, if there's really a relationship between faith and patience. Let's see. Let's see. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we will reap if we faint not. Look at Hebrews chapter 10 verse 3. Verse 35, I'm sorry. So do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patience is what you need now. If you have committed to anything in faith. Patience is what you need now. Hallelujah. King James says, cast not away your confidence which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience. So faith doesn't work alone. You have need of patience. You have need of patience. Patience is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. I might as well bring this up now. I was going to bring it up at the end. Because you say patience, patience, patience. Look, patience is an action word. It's not a passive word. Patience is to continue to do. Look at it in Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. Let us not be weary in well-doing. Patience is not talking about just, just passively sitting there placidly just relaxing and waiting. Something will happen. Something will happen. It's active. But what should you be doing? You should be doing the work in the world. If you had money, what would you do? I will bless other people, so start doing that now. I will give, so start doing that now. I will invest with whatever it is you have. Invest. Hallelujah. Do the work in the world. Do the work in the world. What else can you do? Because patience is active. Set your eyes on Jesus. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the perfecter of our faith. If Jesus was just the author, he would just drop it and waka. But the Bible says he's the finisher, the builder. So he's actively involved with you, working out your faith. So what you are observing, what you are looking at, You've got to maintain your vision. Maintain. Looking on to Jesus. Looking on to that precious promise. Looking on to that word. The Bible says, And Abraham considered not his body. Hello? So we've got to drill ourselves into that habit of, While I look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. 
I know that something is happening from the root. If I release my faith, it's happening from the root. So what can I do if God is doing something at the root? Start to thank him. Father, thank you. I don't know where that money is coming from. But whoever that man is, who you are putting it is in, in his heart. Whoever that person is that you are beginning to walk through. Whoever that situation is, wherever that money is, thank you. It begins to fly. It begins to, oh God, you are so good. Oh Lord, you are so good. My God, you are kind. Oh Lord, you are wonderful. Somebody is believing God for a baby. I'm praising God for you right now my god you are excellent oh excellent is your name and excellent is your power my god you are wonderful jesus you are excellent you have done for her you have done for her I'm praising God for you. Start to praise God because something is happening at the roots. Something is happening at the roots. Something is happening at the roots. God has already started working from the moment you released your faith. The fig tree is drying from the roots. So continue to do God's will. Begin to act like that. Begin to thank God for the ministry of angels. Angels of God that excel in strength, they are out there. They are working to bring forth the will of God to pass in my life. Something is happening at the roots. My daughter's school fees, something is happening at the roots. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will not be broke and I will not be broken. Something is happening at the roots. I don't see it. I don't know it. I don't control it. But God, who is the finisher of my faith, he is at work at the roots. Somebody say, at the roots. Somebody say, at the roots. Your husband's salvation, your child's salvation, if you've believed God for it, begin to understand that something is happening at the roots. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You have need of patience so that you will continue to do God's will then you will receive all that he has promised then and only then only when you take hold of that patience that you need you will receive all that he has promised can you look at somebody and say patience, patience. i hope i'm not annoying somebody now it's like this is not what i want to hear at this time i want to hear about how i can get it right now I, 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 want, I want the symptoms. I, I want the leaf. Just give it to me now. Indomie Christians. Look at your neighbor again and say, patience. You have need of patience. Let's see how many times the scriptures talk about faith and patience. Can you see it? First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 2. It says, we give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers and remembering without ceasing your work of faith. Did we not speak about the work that is in the word? The work of faith, the labor of love, and the patience of hope. These three always are tied together. The work of faith, the labor of love, and the patience of hope. You see, patience is connected to hope is connected to what you see you are not being patient because you are not acting even when your mouth is quiet but your vision is in the opposite then it's not patience patience has to do with hope it has to do with you keeping your eyes on jesus it is the patience of hope he considered not his own body but was strong in faith so it's what you see. What are you seeing? Patience of hope. Look at 2 Thessalonians. That was 1 Thessalonians. Paul, the apostle, was the one that wrote the epistle to the Thessalonian church. 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 4. So that we ourselves glory in you, in the churches of God, for your patience and faith. Can you see the connection of the twins again? Patience and faith. Now look at 1 Timothy chapter 6, 
verse 11 and verse 12. But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness and godliness, faith, love, and patience. Can you see the three again? Faith, love, and patience. If you want to fight the good fight of faith, you must have these three connected together. Remember, even in the verse we are reading, when it says, have the faith of God, he gave you the love element and he gave you the patience element. Hello? When thou start stand praying, forgive. So faith won't work without love. The Bible says faith works by love. You can't stay in unforgiveness and expect the spiritual force of faith to work. And you cannot just release the work of force of faith without enabling it with patience. Look at Revelation written by John, not Paul. I know your works. This is Jesus he's quoting. I know your love, your service, your faith, and your patience. Can you see them related again? Hallelujah. Faith and patience. Let me close it by sharing this story with us. And I know it will be a blessing. 2 Kings chapter 7 and verse 5. And they arose in the twilight. And they arose in the twilight. And they arose in the twilight. In that nebulous time. That time where it is too dark to be day and it is too bright to be called night that's in between time where you see but you don't see is there somebody hear what i'm saying that's what walking by faith is and they arose in the twilight to go onto the camp of the syrians and when they had come to the uttermost part of the camp of syria behold there was no man there for the lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said to one another, Lo, behold, the king of Israel has hired against us the king of the Hittites and the king of the Egyptians to come upon us. And they arose and fled. When did they flee? In the twilight. I want you to see the connection. The lepers arose at twilight. The people in the Syrian camp, they fled when? At twilight. Do you understand what I'm saying? It is the moment you make up your mind to walk by faith that God's work begins to go to work on your behalf. Now, let me give you a background so you understand this story. The Syrians were attacking Israel. They surrounded it round about, therefore effectively cutting them off from their source of nourishment, their farmlands, and the streams of water which used to serve them. So the people are starving inside Samaria. The people are starving and they are hungry. And the Syrians are waiting patiently outside for when they will open the gates and they can come and possess the kingdom. And then God sends a prophet. God is sending me to you today. The prophet began to speak God's word. He said, tomorrow by this time, a bushel of wheat will be sold for a shekel. And he began to prophesy God's word. Sometimes we despise God's word. Sometimes we, we are looking for action because we are looking for symptoms. We are looking for surface. And no time for words. Just do something. But yet, it's, we won't deal with the root cause. The Bible says that people were in such unbelief, they laughed at the prophet. But there were these two lepers who stood at the gate. And they decided, why sit we here till we die? Look, if we stay here, we die. If we go to the Syrian camp, they'll kill us, we die. But there is a chance that they will keep us alive and not kill us we're all in Russia. i know i can't stay here anymore let us go to the enemy's camp. after all the prophet said so acting upon the word they took their first step at twilight that's when the sun was setting do you realize that the time of the setting of the sun is just about 15 minutes from when the sun is still high enough to be called day to the time when it has transitioned and it's now night. It's about 15 minutes. 
I know because I've videoed it many times before, trying to capture a time lapse of the perfect sunlight. It's the whole experience is not, never more than 15 minutes. Within that 15 minutes gap of the lepers taking their first step, God had gone into the Syrian camp and had amplified that first step they took. So much so that they were hearing the noise of armies, not just the steps of lepers coming towards them. So God is waiting. I, I'm, I'm preaching this to let you know that once you commit your faith, once you open your mouth, once you act to do, something is happening, even though you cannot see it. And these people continued. When they got to the camp, was when they realized that God had done something. Hello. When they got to the camp, when they got to the Syrian camp, <laughs> I wish he's blessing you like he's blessing me. He said, where are they? There was nobody. It says, behold, look and see. Verse 5. 5b. No one was there. Now let me ask you a question. When they took the first step, looking in front of them, did they see any change in the Syrian camp? Nothing. Because let's, let me show you another detail. Let me show you another detail that is important. It says, for behold, there was no one there. For the Lord had made the host of Syria to hear the noise of chariots, the noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, the king of Israel has hired the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians upon us. And they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses and even the camp as it was. So you know what? If they were cooking, they left the food on the fire. If they were washing, they left the clothes there. Everything as they was, the only thing that left was them. From the roots. From the roots. In other words, I'm saying that if those lepers kept looking at the Syrian camp, instead of looking at the hope that was inside them, the hope of deliverance, they would have turned back. They would have had occasion to turn back. Look, this sounded like a good idea then, but please, let's just go back. But they kept on going. But they kept on going. One step became, step two became three, four, five, six. Instead of slowing down, they started going even faster. So your eyes are not to be set on the Syrian camp. Your eyes are not to be set on the soil where you sowed the seed. Your eyes should not follow the seed and examine it and, and criticize it and look at it and so on and so forth. Your eyes should be turned inward into your heart where your hope comes from. Your eyes should be looking onto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Your eyes should be turned to him. The devil knows that if he deals with your eyes, is that not what he did with Adam and Eve? Did God not say he messed up what they were seeing on the inside? Did God not say? Say, God is just jealous. He knows you will become like him. Messed up what they were seeing on the inside. Forget about what you see on the inside. It's subject to change. Can I say that again? Whatever you are seeing on the outside is subject to change. It will change. It will change. And from the moment you release your faith, from the moment you commit to it, God is at work. Precious Lord, I know that you are at work concerning me. I know. I know that you have gone forth. For I have put out my faith. And I know you are faithful to deliver. I know that you are faithful. I consider you. I judge you faithful in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, I thank you. My Father, be magnified. Oh, I amplify your greatness today, my Lord and my King. I thank you for you are worthy of all praise. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy to be magnified. I thank you for every person at the sound of my voice. I thank you for every hearer of God's word even now that you have gone to work on their behalf. 
we will not cast away our confidence, but we'll be of those that hold on unto the appearing. Ah, ya kapro le masanta le kabaro na nebalo jine grishteba kalibaro no no sebai. Oh, Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Yeah, balore ne masaya, Reverend Fred. It's great to see you. Man dorono mohonsaya. It is subject to change. It is subject to change. Oh, thank you, Father. Now I'm here to encourage you and to challenge you to release that which is in your hand that we may see the outpouring of that which is in god's hand every time that i cry you hear because god is faithful and no matter the times that we'll find ourselves in we have a reason to rejoice because our god delivers us from every affliction every time when i call for help you're there for me and because we trust him we come to him with confidence and it's a time to hear and you woke me up this morning we give first of all because we honor the lord because he's our lord now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness you've been so faithful you've been so faithful to me you have been faithful lord i am grateful Lord, I am grateful. Now we give unto God not out of compulsion. Some people think that at a time of pressure is a time when you hoard and you hold back. It's a time to keep because you don't know what will happen. But I challenge you when you dare to release your faith, to give unto God, you are giving God an opportunity to manifest when you died what can I say oh Lord you forgive me again not again Whoa. I just want to testify if you want to glorify you are the one who makes me sing you miss the thing I'm all the way Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It means it takes submission to his lordship to connect with his care. You have been faithful. Lord, I am grateful. Lord, I am grateful. I want to encourage you right now to join us if you are persuaded to do so right now and uh, as i speak uh, the number and the account details is being scrolled through your screen pick up your device oh i know it's already with you make that transfer now and god will bless you in the name of jesus Oh, wow, 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 wow. I have been so tremendously blessed in this service. My life will never remain the same. I know the same is with you also, wherever you are watching us. Now, before you go, don't forget, like our Facebook page. And every time you connect, go a step further to share that page to your friends and on your, on your own timeline. So you help us take this service further and help many more people to connect with us. Thank you so much. Till we'll see you next time. God bless.